your favorite. Oh, you remembered. Isn't that nice? <laughs> it's so crazy good. Thank you so much, Blue. What is actually going on in this movie? Like, a lot of characters seem very pent up and that they need to, like, release something. So, writers, I gotta ask, are, are you guys just writing erotica at this point? <laughs> Real 2 is ungodly flaky this movie really does feel like it's trying to create a house but it's kind of missing the floor the the main structure you walk on <laughs> it strongly feels like it's sort of confused on what it wants to be like it takes a lot of elements from the older movie which is fine but it doesn't really evolve that it more so just reminds you that like oh you love the first movie right well Here's more references to the first movie, and here's like the same characters, you know, they're just not evolved. They left without me. Again. That's messed up. Here by morning. Yeah. <laughs> he'll live, but he'll never fly again. That bluebird caused my misery. But now. My trusty assistant. <laughs> I mean, loving wife and colleague. This movie really does test your patience and intelligence. Like, the first movie was three years before this one, and it feels more mature, more like actually accepting that mature people might watch this but this movie feels so babyfied it's so annoying i don't think the first movie was like grade a or like amazing or anything like that i think it was like a decent film and I, something i really do love and appreciate but there's something about the second movie that like it really it really does showcase that like the lack of writers here because there's only one person writing the story for this if i remember correctly it really does showcase that like those two other writers they really did kind of bring more than what meets the eye i gotta say this movie really tries super hard to be as uninteresting as possible and not in like the comedy romance sort of sense to where of course there's quiet moments there's gonna be like some quote-unquote boring moments but like more so in they just don't care to be interesting it takes a whole 20 minutes for the movie to really get set up or get moving in any sort of sense and like it's not even fully set up they are missing a lot of elements like relationship elements and romance elements that like made the first movie so great and would make this movie more impactful towards the end also if i remember correctly it takes like 30 minutes for the characters to actually start moving to the Amazon. They are going to the Amazon to visit. Like Blue and Jewel now have kids and they want to take they want to take them back to the roots, like back to where they grew up uh, cuz there's more blue macaws. But it takes so long to actually get to that point. And when we're at that point, it just it feels like it's playing too much catch up. One thing I can definitely say is not playing catch up is the animation. The animation, Blue Sky is just always knocking it out of the park with their animation. Like, they, I, I'ma say it, to this day, I still think they had the most potential out of any like, 3d animation studio to be one of the best their backgrounds are so vibrant and they're so beautiful to look at i absolutely enjoy looking at this animation overall both the characters except for the humans the humans of uh, the humans of course are just ass i don't know why like without an art style human characters look so trash I i'm so sorry but like anyway like the character animations they are so beautiful so pristine and the backgrounds i love what they do with the backgrounds honest to god blue sky studios feels super underrated with their backgrounds the way they sort of do their backgrounds is like and motion blur is like when they're using motion blur or any type of blur they always have like a couple background elements in the foreground and they stand out a lot and they're also just extremely beautiful and like add so much 
to the scenery to like the storytelling it feels like they don't really use motion blur in the traditional sense to where like oh there's a lot of motion i gotta put motion blur on that bitch like no 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 they actually choreograph their shots in a very specific way to where no matter if you're looking at something like blurry it's going to look almost always beautiful and i personally believe they look so beautiful because of how slow everything is moving like they don't go at breakneck pace when like panning to a character or like using a weird perspective shot and then like using a lot of motion blur they go very slow almost and it still creates the feeling of motion like sometimes fast motion but like it's just it stays beautiful it stays pristine and i think a lot of other studios that i may be talking about need to take notes <laughs> Speaking a little bit more on the character design, of course these characters are like birds. There's a lot of these birds that kind of look the same. They're meant to bend in, blend in in the background. But the main characters, like, they have very distinct and beautiful features that really make them stand out from just a normal bird or a normal animal. These birds come in various different sizes and like they also have scarring on their faces, their necks, or like some sort of scarring in order to distinctify them. Some have hair, which is like the way they use their hair, they use the feathers to like curve it into hair. I really do love that. I think that's super fucking unique. The thing I've sort of noticed with Blue Sky Studios with their character design is that like, Unlike other studios that will go unnamed at this moment, like, a bird always feels very different from just a normal bird. Like, like it's not like, say, like, Sing 2, because I, I just recently talked about that, to where, like, an elephant always feels like an elephant, no matter what character you're looking at, for the most part. It just always feels like an elephant. Or, like, you know, uh, whatever else. It, it feels like every single bird feels human to where like they have different features different colors different weight classes different sizes different scars on their body different hairstyles that's what i am looking for in characters and i wish mainstream sort of animation studios got that more disney still sort of gets it not necessarily with zootopia because it's utopia but like <sighs> Can we do it more? Can we do it more? <laughs> as for the score, the same person is doing the score as the first one, but in this one, it feels more laid back for the most part and more like decent, not necessarily the best. Of course, there is still some beautiful moments with the score. Like there is, I'm pretty sure, some very good strings in there, very good melodies, but for the most part, it kind of like, it feels like they're going half power at this. They realize that like, the story isn't really necessarily most captivating and they're just like okay i'm just tone it back save this for another project or save my full power for another project oh this air it's so fresh and full Goodbye, stinky city air! Yeah, bye. I feel like that becomes even more apparent when you hear the Ice Age jump scare. <laughs> Um, <laughs> there's a section, there's actually two sections to where, like, you hear that iconic Ice Age sort of melody, and I'm just like, wait, oh, this is Rio, like, I, I, I don't, I don't know, like, I, I have no problem with him reusing the melody, that's a lie. That's actually a lie because I really do. Like, it, it's for the Ice Age franchise. You could have made something else. Like, what? what is this? I think it's time to go home. We should talk about this. Talk about what? Blue, look around. The kids are thriving. They love being in the wild. Uh, maybe this place is home. Home? H how could this be home? I have done everything I can to fit in and help out, but no matter what I do, it's wrong. As for the soundtrack, I believe there is like two original songs that they made. One I really do enjoy and 
Another one that's sort of smaller that Annie Hathaway sings, and Annie Hathaway is just so fucking hot. Uh, excuse me. Anna Hathaway is just so beautiful with her singing. I I love her singing so much. <laughs> Oh my god, her voice is so beautiful. Oh my god. If I was a lesser per if I was a lesser person, actually now that I think about it, there's actually a lot more original soundtracks than I thought. I think the one that stood out the most and made me like not necessarily care for it is I Will Survive. They did a remix of it and it's they add rap in it and it's it's so bad. It's it's so 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 bad. I'm a survivor. I got the eye of a tiger, be training the game and eat to my fiber. You been staying alive, well I be staying alive. Watch where you sit when I spit my saliva like Ooh, you never seen a chucker too. Rocking and chucking and dropping and popping and locking too. I'ma be hundred percent honest. We as black folk probably need to start gatekeeping rap music again. <laughs> There's also a track with this poisonous frog and it's it's actually very good. It's like a sort of like opera singer type thing and I I kind of fuck with it. I think it's like one of the best performances in the whole movie. But your lungs would explode and you'd look just like this and you'd gag with your face turning blue. Ew. But darling, I'll protect you, I will. Don't worry, just chill. Because there isn't a bird that I wouldn't kill for you. <laughs> Can't you see? Oh, we were destined to be for you. Now, stepping away from that and going more into the story, this story is actually about Jewel and Blue and their kids going to the Amazon in order to, like, reconnect with their family they thought were dead. There's actually more Blue uh, Spix Macaws. They sort of do the old trope of, like, hey, I'm going to meet your family, and, oh, your family doesn't like me. They don't accept me because... I just don't want to change who I am or change my ways in order to fit in or anything like that. And like, oh, there's a there's a guy who's like your childhood best friend or whatever like that, who who's absolutely better than me and like best me in every single way. And I just can't compete. I can't fucking compete. <laughs> yeah, they sort of do that. And it's very irritating because there's absolutely no communication between Blue and Jewel. Like, they are married and they just don't want to talk to each other. They are just being pushed away from each other because they are in a new environment and because the story just says so. There's also a weird little subplot with Tulio and Linda to where, like, they are trying to save the Amazon. There's, uh, someone cutting down trees, some goofy ass little villain who's just like addicted to suckers for whatever. They're just goofy as hell. They are unserious. Like, why do they exist? <laughs> yeah, this unserious villain is trying to like cut down trees and just like, I don't know, I guess, quote unquote, be evil. He's like, oh, who cares about birds anyway? Like, it it's so stupid. Speaking of villains, Nigel actually returns with an anteater and a poisonous frog, which... This is gonna sound like controversial as hell, which I don't really care, but the poisonous frog is probably the best actor in this movie, or at least given the best lines. That is absolutely weird to say because this frog is horny as fuck. They are like, they are drenched. They are soaking and it's just like insane, but like, they are just the most lively character. They feel like they're, they're the only character that doesn't sound bored like with this script or like with this story in general yeah um she's absolutely amazing and gabby definitely steals the show for me like she's the main reason i want to watch rio too which shouldn't necessarily be the case everybody else just feels watered down and like they just want to be their past selves and they never ever grew for the most part like if i really wanted to be connected to blue or jewel or like pedro or any of the other characters again i just watched the first one because they actually grew and they actually like established relationships within each other there was actually stakes there's actually like something going on in this movie it just 
it feels so separated. Everyone's so separated. No one's really like talking to each other for the most part. And we're just sort of going through motions. The majority of this movie kind of feels like nostalgia bait. And it really does suck because the one thing I'm nostalgic for is the romance. There's almost no romance in this movie. Like, yeah, towards the end, Blue actually does want to be a better husband. And there is some sort of element of romance there. But, like, the rest of it is sort of gone. They're just like, where's the romance? Where's, like... The connections, even with the kids, like, it just feels like the kids are there. They don't feel like they're necessarily raising them or that they care for them. They're just there. And, like, I just miss the family connection they sort of had, you know? Yeah, with all that being said, I believe I'm personally going to give this movie a solid four. It just... It's a decent movie, but a lot of it is just lacking and... There's just not enough like romantic elements or just relationship elements in general for me. Personally, the biggest draw for me for the first movie was just the romantic elements and how they made one of the most beautiful romantic scenes in like animes in history, in my opinion. And so to like to go from that to this, it's it's just not really giving me the best vibes. But that's all I have to say. Anyway, how's it going, pups? It's a canine, and I'm. I'm a fly, fly just like a bird. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so happy my voice is back. Oh, you have no fucking idea. Oh my god.